Tell me, Professor Greenidge, um, do they actually paint on both sides of the glass because it's got a wonderful depth? Well, it's not normally the way. Even today, what they'll do if they try to get this yellow colour, this is, this is called silver staining, and it's done through uh, silver nitrate application on the other side of the glass. So they get the piece of glass, and then they would put that on, on what's going to be the outside of the glass, and then fire it. Mm -hmm. And during the firing process, this sort of thick, muddy, brown stuff actually becomes trans transparent, and you get the gold effect. And it was a technique that was developed sort of from the sort of 13th, 14th century, middle of Europe somewhere, silver staining, and it completely freed up the way the stained glass was designed. Because in previous times, if for instance, if you'd have wanted these yellow bits here, you would have had to put separate lead lines in to get those. You'd have ha actually had yellow glass. And so you would end up with just a mass of lead lines and uh, not much else. So it's quite an important innovation, really. So, Prof, I've got a couple of questions. How old would you say this mixture of glasses and if you can date it how would you date it it's difficult because it is a, a conglomeration of other bits and pieces um probably from windows in this church probably put together in the 19th century i'm guessing now um most of it looks middle of the 15th century right. uh, take, presumably you could use obviously the stars of the clothing because they're going to use stars that they recognize themselves they aren't going to necessarily, obviously, they're going to... Yeah. No, it's generally later on that you start to get attempts to put people in the costume of, of the previous yes. centuries and stuff like that. Right. Um, but there's all kinds of different things going on there. Like I said, these, these horses here are absolutely amazing, and I, I still say that it's likely that the people who painted those horses, those faces, the, were the same people or the same person who did a lot of glass at East Harlem Church, because I think I recognise the same hand. But it's difficult, because if these people are trained by the same people and they're working in the same workshops or uh, ateliers, they're all going to be painting in really similar style. Mm -hmm. I reckon there's at least, I reckon there's two separate windows going on here. If you look at all this kind of business, like this, this lovely foot here, of this large, what would have been a, a taller figure, I think that's a different window to this. Mm. It's a different technique. This is a freer hand. It's a somebody with a bigger vision. I, I think this this could be slightly later. There's, there's at least two different windows that have been pooched, possibly even three. Let's go over to the other window now. Oh yeah, okay. okay. Oh this is nice, got a bit of uh, a bit of red glass on it. I think that's um yeah that's flashed glass. If you try and make red glass um, in the traditional way, it, I'm not quite sure why, but it always comes out of the pot far too dark. And if you put it in the window, it just looks like a piece of black, opaque glass. Right. Um, so what they used to do, what they still do, is you get a piece of, you make a piece of glass clear, and then you kind of um, dip it in your red glass pot metal substance, so it's like got a layer on the top, and then that allows more light to come through. Right. I've never done it myself, but um, I've seen it. So if you, if you were to take this piece of glass out there and hold it on its edge, you'd see it was mainly a piece of clear glass, with a, you'd see a very thin layer of red oh. on it. Um, so that gives it that lovely sort of pinky colour, if it was red all the way through it would just look black. And also, how would, can you tell us where this would have been made? Is there any clues to that? Um, probably Norwich. What would be your basis for that? Is it just something you kind of get a feel for when it's you look at it? Something I've just made up. <laughs> very, very rigorous there, there's, Professor Greenidge. Um, there's, there's evidence for glass. Uh, Is this to do with the factory in Norwich? Well, yeah. You normally, do you normally tell Norwich, Norwich stained glass by um, there's dead giveaways, big hands, expressive faces, and um, Baggy lines under the eyes, they're a classic. Were people in Norwich not sleeping very much in no, that period then? Um, you've got, um, is it the Ma um, Manford family are producing stained glass in Norwich? I think it's Manford. Um, King, uh, King Street, southern part of the city. So there's a very specific area where they're all producing? Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's, a little, there's a really nice little booklet. I bet one of you have got it. Um, it's called uh, Medieval People of Norwich. I've got it. Yeah. And it's Juicen. Sorry? Juicen, that one. 
Was it Juice? I thought a lady wrote it. Didn't oh no, I know the one you mean. It's, it's different. It's a little pamphlet type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. And, uh, yeah. and, and 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 that goes on about the uh, glass production in Norwich. So I mean, Norwich is at this time. Norwich was probably England's second city. It's not. It's unlikely to come from anywhere else. And, Kingsley, maybe. And and we were a bit puzzled by this here which is either pulling a pint or pulling something else. I have no idea what that is it, whatsoever. Surely it's just a carved ornament, but it looks a bit yeah, flashy. But, but, there's <laughs> a, but there's, there's, on the other side, you've got somebody similar holding something similar. Does this say, then, that the artist would have had a certain amount of freedom? <laughs> so if someone would say to them, the commission may want to send whatever, St. Pete or what have you, however, the rest of it, they can do what they want oh, according God. to what their own whim or their own... Mm. Interest is a skill. Right, got to wind down in terms so, of video now. I'm just going to sign out, but what I want us to do is a collective ragged, ragged society of antiquarian ramblers. Huzzah! One, two, three. Huzzah! Huzzah!